Hello, my wonderful students. I hope you are having a nice time. You are welcome to basic science class. And today, we will have a little correction to the, uh, the last calculation I gave you. And then we will proceed. I hope you remember the last topic we had was on energy. We have defined energy and we said that energy is the ability or the capacity to do work. And we mentioned several forms of energy, which includes the chemical energy, the mechanical energy, the heat energy, electrical energy, light energy, and so on. Then we said that day that we'll be talking more on mechanical energy. And I gave you two different forms or two di different types of mechanical energy, which includes the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Also, I know I gave you an assignment, so we'll be having our corrections now. I hope you are having your book or your exercise books with your pen there. I will do the corrections and then we'll mark it together. The question says, a fruit of mass 50 kg. Remember I told you that mass is measured in kg. Remember I said that mass is measured in kg. If that mass is given in grams, the first thing you will do is to convert that grams to kilogram. Using 1 kilogram equals to 1 gram. But now, here mass is given in kg, so we wouldn't convert anything. So we say mass, mass, which is m, is equals to 50 kg. Mass, which is m, is equals to 50 kg. Falls from a height of 5 meters. So the height is 5 meters to the ground. It says calculate a potential energy. B kinetic energy. It said the kinetic energy of the fruit if the velocity is 4 meter per second. Velocity is equals to 4 meter per second. And take G to be 10 meters per second square. Now when you look up here, you will notice that the difference between the unit of velocity and acceleration due to gravity is that velocity is measured in meter per second. Why acceleration due to gravity is in meter per second per second. Or you can say meter per second square. Okay. So we will now check. The first thing here is to calculate potential energy. And I told you that day that potential energy can be represented mathematically as mgh. That is mass of the body times the acceleration due to gravity times the height of the body. So the first thing we will now do is to calculate the potential energy. So potential energy, which is PE, is equals to M times G times H. Our M is 50 kg. Our G is 10 meter per second square. And our H is 5 meters. So we'll substitute for M, G, and H. And that will be equals to 50 times 10 times 5. 50 times 10 times 5. 50 times 10, just take this zero here, put it behind here. That will give us 500. Then 500 times 5. We can just solve it by the corner we have here 500 times 5 5 times 0 is 0 so we write 0 5 times 0 0 we write another 0 5 times 5 
will give us 25. So we'll write our 25. So that means that our PE is equal to 2,500. Now remember I said, after your calculation, you must put the units. Don't forget to put the units. And I told you that energy has an SI unit of joule. So because potential energy is a form of energy, it must be in joules. Likewise, kinetic energy. So our unit will be joules. That is J. Okay. So if you know you got 2,500, mark it right. Then B. This is A. B said calculate kinetic energy. That day, I said you should try it using the formula I gave you. And the formula for calculating kinetic energy is 1 over 2 times m times v square. Or you can say half mv square. That means kinetic energy is equals to half mv square. And our m is 50 kg. And our v is 4 meter per second. So you have it equals to half times 50 times 4 squared. Remember, you don't say 2 times 4. This square here is telling us that this 4 will occur 2 times. So you better do it this way. Half times 50 times 4 times Four. Okay. Two cancel. One. Two cancel here will give us two. Two times fifty will give us hundred. How do I know two times zero is zero? Two times five is ten. And that is hundred. Then hundred times four will give us four hundred. That means our kinetic energy is equals to 400 joules. Don't forget to put your unit. Okay. So if you know you got 400 joules and you is well stated this way, also give yourself a good... If you don't get it, please mark it wrong and then pick the corrections. Okay. Today, we'll go straight to kinetic energy. In this kinetic energy, I told you is. <coughs> An energy possessed by a body in motion. A body that is moving in, is, is in motion. The energy possessed by a body as it's moving is what we refer to as kinetic energy. And already I've given you the formula for calculating this kinetic energy, which is Ke. Ke represents kinetic energy. It's equal to half mv squared. Now, V has to do with the change in speed. Now, we'll pick some problems in kinetic energy, then we'll solve them. Sometimes, you may be asked to calculate the velocity or even the mass. That's why you must know the unit of each quantity. For instance, if you are asked to calculate the velocity, after calculating the velocity, it is expected that you put the unit. The correct unit for velocity is meter per second. If you put joules, you are saying something else. You are telling us that you have calculated energy, which is wrong. If you put kg, you are saying something else, meaning that you have calculated mass. So, let's try this. To calculate kinetic energy, I'm using your question paper. I have one here. I said, calculate the kinetic energy of a 37 kg car moving with a velocity of 10 meter per second. Calculate the kinetic energy 
kinetic energy of a 37 kg car moving I repeat the question. Calculate the kinetic energy of a 37 kilogram car moving with a velocity of 10 meters per second. We'll go straight. First of all, we'll read the question, understand what we are asked to do, then we'll start our calculation. First of all, we are asked to calculate kinetic energy. Knowing too well that kinetic energy has to do with energy in motion and the mathematical representation of this kinetic energy is half mv squared. So whatever we are solving, we must use the right formula, which is half mv squared. Okay, so we we'll write our solution. Mass. Remember, how do I know this is mass? Remember, I told you that mass is measured in what? In kilograms. So, I know that mass is 37 kilograms. Moving with a velocity. Now, I know that this 10 meter per second is velocity because it's well stated here. This is velocity of 10 meter per second. So, I'll write my V is equal to what? 10 meters per second, then I am asked to calculate kinetic energy. I don't know my kinetic energy. So that's what I'm calculating. So what do I do now? I'll write out the formula. Kinetic energy is equal to half mv square, which is equal to 1 over 2 times m is 37 times 10 square and that's equals to most of the time students will make the mistake of saying 10 times 2 no just make sure you bring out everything correctly just write 10 times 10 before you start your division okay that's 1 over 2 times 37 times 10 times 10 this will cancel this will cancel here and this will give us 5. So we have 37 times 5 times 10. So 10 times 37 will give us 370. So we'll now say 370 times 5. 5 times 0 will give us 0. Okay? 5 times 7, 35. We'll write Five, then keep our three. Five times three will give us fifteen. Fifteen plus three, you have fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So it's eighteen. That means our ke is equals to one thousand eight hundred and fifty joules. One thousand eight hundred and fifty joules. What if you are asked to calculate velocity? You are, you are given kinetic energy, you are given mass, and you are asked to calculate velocity. You still apply the same formula. You don't go anywhere to borrow anything. You still follow the same process. Let's try one. This your question paper number one, section B. You have a man of mass 90 kg. A man of mass, let me write it out in case if you don't have it. This is number two. A man of mass 90 kg is moving.
Now, when you look at the question on the board, you notice that you are asked to calculate velocity. So what do we do here? He said, a man of mass, you are given mass, 90 kg, is moving at a constant velocity. He has kinetic energy of 2205 joules. That means kinetic energy was given. Calculate his velocity. What do we do? So first of all, we write the solution. Always interpret whatever you have understood from the question before you start your calculation. Mass is given, you write it out. M is equals to 90 kg. M is equals to 90 kg. Then he said, he's moving at a constant velocity. He has kinetic energy of, that means his kinetic energy, which is Ke, is equals to 2205 joules. Then calculate the velocity. You can see here, we are calculating velocity, not kinetic energy. We'll still apply the same formula, which is Ke is equals to half mv squared. I believe you have copied the question so I can clean it. And write up here. Okay. Now we'll write out our formula. Ke equals to 1 over 2 mv squared. Then we'll substitute these values. Ke is giving us 2205 joules. So here we have Ke. We'll write, instead of writing Ke again, we'll write 2205 is equals to 1 over 2 times our M is 90 kilograms. So we'll write 90 kilogram times V square. We don't know that V square. That's what we are calculating. So 2 will divide here. 1. 2 here, 2 divide 9 will give us 4, remain 1. So we'll write the 4. Then we'll put that one here, 2 divide 10 will give us 5. So we have 45. That means we are having 2205 is equals to 45 times v square. 45 times v square. Now, what do we do? This thing is the same thing as 45 v square, meaning that this 45 is the coefficient of v square. So, we'll divide through, we'll divide both sides with the coefficient of the v square. So, we'll divide here, 45, here, 45. 45, we'll cancel 45 here, then we we'll divide here. 5, we know that 5 can go. How do I know? Any number that ends with 5 is divisible by 5. Because this number ends with 5, and this one is it also ends with 5, I know that 5 can divide the both of them. So 5 here will give me 9. 5 into 22. 5 cannot divide 2, so I go for the 2. 5 divide 22 will give us 4. Remain 2. 5 divided 20 will still give us 4. 5 into itself will give us 1. What else can divide? 3 can go. 3 here will give us 3. 3 divide 4. 3 divide 4 will give us 1. Remain 1. You put it here, which is 14. 3 divide 14. 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 can divide 12 to give us 4 remaining. 2. So we write 4. Then we'll put 2 here. 3 divide 21 will give us 7. Is there any other thing that can divide? 3, 1. 3 divide 14 will give us 4. Remain 2. 3 divide 27 will give us 9. So we are left with 49 is equals to V squared. 49 is equals to v squared. But remember, you are, you, you, you are asked to calculate 
velocity, which is v. So what do we do? To remove this square, we'll root this. So we'll now say root of 49 is equals to v. What's the root of 49? Meaning, which number will multiply itself to give us 49? We we'll say 5 times 5. 5 times 5 will give us 25. 6 times 6. 6 times 6 will give us 36. Let's try 7. 7 times 7 will give us 49. So, meaning that root of 49 is equal to 7. Therefore, V is equal to 7. What will be the unit? Remember I told you? The unit of velocity is what? Meter per second. Not meter per second square. Not kg. Not joules. Remember, this is velocity. So, it's measured in meter per second. You can as well write it this way. Meter per second. They are still the same thing. Okay. Here, we calculated velocity. We use the same formula. Ke equals to half mv square. Our Ke was given. Our mass was also given. Then we are looking for velocity. We don't know the velocity. So we now say the value of Ke, which is 2205, is equals to half times 90, which is the value of mass times V square. Then we divide. After the, our division, we got 49. So 49 is equals to V square. And remember, we are asked to calculate velocity, not velocity square. So we had to find the root of 49 to give us the value for velocity. And finally, we got velocity equals to 7 meter per second. I believe you understood this. Okay. So I will quickly give you an assignment. Then we'll summarize this topic, energy. When next we meet, we'll talk more about the formation of chemical compounds using the elements. So I will give you an assignment on this. You will do it. Make sure you do the assignment so that you will ascertain if you actually understood what we said today. Okay. The assignment is number one. Just one assignment. A student of mass 10 kg is moving at a constant velocity. He has kinetic energy of 500 joules. Calculate his velocity. You're just applying the same formula, the same method. Now you are calculating velocity. You use the same formula, use the same method, but you get the different answer. Okay? Don't forget to put your unit. The correct unit for velocity is meter per second. The correct unit for velocity is what? Meter per second. Some people may be saying meter per second squared. No. Meter per second. Okay. So after your calculation, you must put the unit. If you don't put the unit, you will not score. So make sure you put your unit. Is that okay? I believe you understood this. I will just run down what we did the first day. Then, and this is the summary. I said that we energy is the ability or the capacity to do work. A child running through a staircase has something that enables him to do that. And that is energy. 
someone with a greater energy does a greater work. Meaning, a body with great energy will do a greater work than the one with a lesser energy. And also, we mentioned various forms of this energy. We also said there are some appliances we use in our house or around us, or appliances we see around us that helps to convert this energy from one form to another. And we said that that is what we refer to as the law of conservation of energy. You are conserving the energy, meaning that energy can, can, can be converted from one form to another. It cannot be destroyed, it cannot be created, but it can change from one form to another. For instance, I want to talk with you, or uh, I want to speak to a, an audience, I'll pick my microphone. Now, without the battery in the microphone, you notice that the microphone may not function. So, the microphone is converting a particular energy to another energy. It's converting, if it's the one using battery, it's converting chemical energy to sound energy. Our electric iron, I want to iron my clothes. I can't make use of that iron without an electricity or electric source. So what do I do? I first of all quickly plug my iron to an electric source. What will happen? The electric iron will convert that electric electric energy to heat energy, with which I will now smoothen my clothes. So those appliances around us do this work. And because they do this work, we say that they have the ability to do work. And that's why we refer to them as forms of energy. Okay, I believe you understood this topic. And I believe you understood this calculations too. Please make sure you do the assignment. I've noticed that most of the time students fail the, as, uh, the calculations. They don't do well in the calculation. But if you follow the formula properly as stated, I know you will do well. God bless you and stay safe.